is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM, Thursday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We got some volatility coming into this market even just now. We're trading at 4,100. We're basically flat on the session. When I was getting ready for the program, even a couple minutes ago, you had the S&Ps positive by about 15 or 16 points. You see the chart on a five-minute basis. 855 we were trading at 4118 not sure if there's a news event going on right now uh fundamental data we have some adp payrolls data this morning we have weekly jobless claims those numbers were already out though but boy in the last five ten minutes the s p is just dropping about 20 points in a heartbeat nasdaq 100 look at this sell-off what is going on something's going on 100 points we just give up in about 10 minutes right now in the nasdaq 100 we're negative by 32 points on the session Dow barely hanging on to gains, up by 18. The Russell barely positive by one point right now. We jump to crypto. Bitcoin sitting right at 30,000 this morning. We have Ethereum at 18.18 for you. You jump to gold, up $12. And I'm not sure what data just came out. Uh, no, that's the 8.30 jobs data. Okay, 9 o'clock, the markets are moving, though. Gold was moving a little bit on the jobs data. Now it's back above that price point at 18.63. And we jump to notes and bonds, a little bit of sell-off yesterday. Today, we're basically up six ticks, but you see where we were chopping around from where we were overnight. You get the 10-year trading up six ticks at 118.26. We jump over to the VIX, a little bit of a sell-off yesterday. VIX, talk about some sustained gains. We put this thing up on a daily, man. You're chopping around for the better part of six weeks at 25-plus on the VIX sitting right at that level right now the vix technically positive 27 cents on the session at 2596 okay we jump around to the fundamental news ahead of tomorrow's non-farm payrolls number we get adp that's a pretty weak number uh the headline number for adp business payrolls increasing by 128,000 held back by a decline in small business employment that was actually the headline uh subtext Firms with fewer than 50 employees shedding 91,000 jobs in May, you get a net increase of 128,000 last month. Obviously, that would mean that firms with more than 50,000 employees uh, adding about, what, 220,000, something like that, jobs. And then you minus out the small companies that are dropping 91,000. You take a look at where we are in the number, definitely a decreasing number. I mean, that's the slowest we've seen in a while for the ADP number. And that followed a downwardly revised 202,000 gain in April, trailed all estimates in a Bloomberg survey of economists. Now, this all comes ahead of Friday number. Friday, the estimate is 301. We've had some huge divergences between ADP and non-farm payrolls. Sometimes they come in line. Sometimes they are just bonkers different. There's revisions that then go into it. Maybe they line up a little bit better after the revi revisions sort out some of the static going on on a month-to-month -month basis. But that's a miss. It's a miss on the small companies as well. And uh, yeah, as even this says, ADP figures don't always follow the same patterns as the Labor Department data. Not sure why. Can somebody tell me why those numbers don't align if you're talking about ADP that has so many employees? Service provider employment rising by 104,000. So here, I'm going to jump around to a couple things because I have say Bloomberg has another article with some great charts about where the jobs are, where they are prior to the pandemic versus now. Jobless claims also out this morning. Applications for unemployment benefits fell to 200,000. Continuing claims decreased to lowest level since 1969. 200,000. Market was looking for 210. Uh, bottom line is this number is just chopping around at about 200 right now off of the lows that we had in March and April. But that's a pretty decent number. In a healthy economy, you're going to get some type of churn with people just cycling through jobs. Maybe you're quitting to get a better job, etc. Maybe you're quitting um, for various reasons, obviously. Now, we jump to, is this the one? Yes, it is. 
labor market to show re-emerging dichotomy of tightness risks. So the chart I found cool here is the industry graph in terms of where these jobs are. Several sectors have surpassed their pre-pandemic employment levels, professional and business services, 738,000 jobs above where we were prior to the pandemic, transportation and warehousing. Be interesting to see how that plays out over the next six to 12 months with many companies building out their infrastructure, notably Amazon, way too quickly in terms of the demand that they were forecasting that they've now all tamed. Nonetheless, transportation and warehousing, 673,000 jobs added in two years. I think Amazon alone has added like something like 800,000 employees over the last two or three years. I wonder how many they make up in the transportation and warehousing sector that's gained 630, 73,000 over that time. Retail trade, 284. On the flip side of negative, look at leisure and hospitality, down one. 0.4 million from pre-pandemic levels. There are a lot of small, probably leisure and hospitality businesses that were not able to ride out uh, the pandemic. And I'm sure that that's playing into some of those jobs not being able to turn back on as simply as turning a key. They are gone for now. And uh, yes, that market will come back, but uh, obviously slower than the rest of the market. Now, I think they talked about in here that... Yeah, leisure and hospitality added the fewest jobs since December of 2020. Now, tying those two together, right? Leisure and hospitality is supposed to be charging back. That's the one to make up the most. Seems like that would be the area that we could gain the most jobs the quickest if we're down 1.4 million jobs from the pre-pandemic levels. And nonetheless, you're having the slowest employment ad for leisure and hospitality since December of 2020. Uh, goods producers increased by 24,000, reflecting a gain in manufacturing, but a pullback in construction hiring. And yeah, we got the weekly jobless claims number at 200,000 last week. So we'll see how that one plays out uh, tomorrow when we get the non-farm payroll number. But as of right now, this market dropping a little bit. I'm not sure if anyone in the den saw anything coming out right there uh, at the market, but we got somebody selling, man, as the S&Ps just dropped a quick 25 points, man, since five minutes before I came on the air at 8.55 a.m. this morning. All right, jumping around to what else is going on. Yeah, what number was that at 8.55 or 9 o'clock? Microsoft cuts guidance? Okay, maybe that is it. Let's jump over to Microsoft. Because they're going to hit. Oh, there you go. Okay, thanks, S&P. Uh, yeah, so there's the reason for you, folks. Microsoft cutting guidance. You drop a quick eight dollars from 274 to 266 right at nine o'clock. Let's see how some of the other cloud players, CRM, they were a force yesterday, man. Some strong earnings. You gave back a lot of the gains early as the market sold off to about 175. We'll jump to Google. Google shares trading a bit, but Microsoft, they're getting hammered. Let's see how Apple's trading in the NASDAQ. Yeah, they sell off a little bit as well. You got Apple opening up down one dollar right now from 148.71 to 147.90. Let's jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla, basically flat. You're down $3. It was, it was up to seven seventy eight. We'll talk a little bit about Tesla later in the program. So Elon's got his letter out to executives saying, get back to the office at least 40 hours a week or you shouldn't work here. Um, that's his right as the CEO to talk about that he wants workers in-house 40 hours a week. We'll see how that may play out, though, because human capital is tough right now. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll get ready for the market. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P back to barely positive right now. You might got Microsoft trading down uh, about six dollars right now, maybe yeah, five six dollars right now. You're down about two percent on Microsoft to two sixty six eighty two. Nasdaq one hundred down about twenty two points right now. That news as Microsoft lowers their guidance. Uh, pulling up a quick headline there lowers the guidance on weak outlook was the headline, and yeah, the stock's down about two percent right now. Okay, jumping back to the Elon story real quick. So it'll be interesting to see you know how different companies navigate the landscape of hiring workers and the remote work ability of many workers to work remotely. Elon, not a fan. He wants everybody back a minimum of 40 hours a week, and that way may be what it takes to have the creativity to run a company like Tesla. Here's what I will say, though. Talent is tough to come by. You're going to have people that believe in what he's doing. One of the tough parts right now going on, and one of my friends was talking about this last night in our group chat, and it's a great point. I mean, a lot of people, when you're coming in, you're getting shares potentially, right, of Tesla. There's a lot of employees of recent hire that are sitting on shares that are well above 740. And and it's going to be tough to retain capital if they see it as very difficult to have the types of returns on their option portfolios that they have working for this company. You add in that that you have to be sleeping at the factory like Elon it's a tough one. We'll see. He's the CEO as of now. That's a completely reasonable decision that may be correct, and it's going to be correct for a lot of companies. Uh, but the way he delivered it, too, is is uh, leave something to be desired would be one thing to say it. Uh, if you don't show up, we'll assume you've resigned. I mean, come on. You can have some respect for your employees along the way. The more senior, senior you are, the more visible must be your presence. Uh, and yeah, completely reasonable. We'll see if it plays out. Human capital is so tough right now, man. Uh, there's a lot of brilliant people in technology that don't have to be living in a Tesla factory 40 hours plus a week to change the world. But Elon, you may be right. We'll see. Uh, okay, let's see what else we have going on. Uh, this story was just interesting in terms of wake up, folks, for sure. Terror U.S. dollar collapse will probably be the end of most algorithmic algorithmic stable coins crypto exec says folks i went through some of this on the article and if you haven't been through it i'll try and find that bloomberg article that i was reading that was so great 
it walked through that basically it was an, an entire Ponzi scheme and many NFTs are entire Ponzi schemes well out in the open. They're guaranteeing 20% returns to bring investors into their crypto token, an algorithmic stable coin. How, like UST, okay, it was based off of Luna. If it's based off the crypto that can go to zero, then it, it shouldn't have the word stable in it. And I think we all learned that. And you're taking an extreme level of risk for almost no reward when you're in a stable coin, right? It's never going to go above a buck, but you know it's going to go below a buck if things go haywire, as they very realistically can. Uh, what else have we got? Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how Walmart's able to compete, man. Uh, the store becoming a shoppable fulfillment center. Uh, the store is becoming a shoppable fulfillment center. I mean, they have the outreach, folks. Uh, I did have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. We got stopped out on that recent pullback. One of the reasons I had it, technical but fundamental as well, there's only really one company that can compete with Amazon, man, right now, and it's Walmart. And they have a long way to go. I've talked about my troubles ordering with Sam's. Um, boxes show up with 15 different items all in them. You, you need a forklift almost to bring it in your door. They're, they're putting babies, boxes of babies' diapers in there in the same box as popcorn shattering the whole popcorn bag. There's popcorn all over the bag. Amazon would never do that. Just the process of having to compete with a company like Amazon that fires on all cylinders is very difficult. But Walmart has the reach and they have the warehouse space and they are spending the money, but boy, it's gonna be a lot of money. Uh, Walmart is leaning into two key advantages to drive a e-commerce business, 4,700 stores, and this is a cool one. 90% of Americans live within 10 miles of a Walmart store. They already have an infrastructure. You could say that they have too, too large of an infrastructure for probably what they need to compete going forward. The largest grocer in the U.S. by revenue, uh, and they want to expand its assortment of merchandise, improve the customer experience. I would say that one in a big way, man. Amazon just gets it done. You know, Walmart, they don't get it done. In terms of delivery, nobody else does. I mean, compared to Amazon, it's a tough one. But the percentage that Amazon has, if Walmart can eke into it, is a huge number. Amazon has 39.5% of the online market share in the U.S. That's crazy when you think about how many items we order online, that Amazon has four out of $10 being spent online, period, uh, compared with Walmart's 7%. So for every $4 that somebody is spending online on Amazon, Walmart, they're sending 70 cents right now. There's no reason why those two start, can't start competing to a greater level when, if Walmart competes. What I'll say, though, is it's not even close to that in my household. Amazon is probably well over 40% of what I order online and dwarfs Walmart in a large capacity. Being a Prime member, I know that's probably exacerbated. But yeah, convenience and just high level of quality in terms of the process they deliver. Last year, based on the 12 month period, June 2020 to June 21, 2021, consumers spent more money in Amazon than the big box retailer for the first time. So it's a tough one. Walmart has a shot. There's your e-commerce growth slowing in recent quarters. Yes, yeah, slowing to a standstill. But look at these growth numbers they pulled forward, man. 74%, 97%, 79%, and 69%. Uh, you divvy those out over a couple of years and you're still growing at 37% quarter over quarter continuing on that level. Yeah, and they have, uh, they say 4,700 stores is what they have. Yeah, so they bought Jet.com in 2016. That was a big one. They got Mark Lore with that. He gave them a shot to compete, but you see still how far they are behind the eight, eight ball for Walmart. Take a look at Walmart shares. Five minutes to go until the opening bell. There's your pullback. Walmart had quite a pullback yesterday, too, man. From 129 to 125, we take a look back at the daily. This thing was consolidating for a while, back to a weekly. Between the price point of about 133 to 151, you jump over that area, and then, boom, it was a quick slide from 160 to 120 on this equity. We're going to back it up even further for a five-year weekly. And you can see that Walmart is right back to basically the highs we had in 2019. We bounce off that area. Walmart, this morning, you're basically flat, trading at 125. Uh, Target, some tough woes as well. Since we're looking at Walmart, the interesting thing about Target, if you're looking for an entry, we're right back at the 618. We're chopping around there for a few weeks now. 156, Target shares basically flat this morning as well. 
All right, let's jump back to Microsoft, see how they're trading on their gut, their cut. Down a little bit to 165, we take a look at uh, Microsoft on a longer term time frame. This equity sitting right at the 382. So you're going to open at about 266. The 382 is at about 267. Um, still, you know, yeah, we got up to 349, folks. But what's important to remember here is, is if this is like a real bear market pullback, right? Don't you usually get below where you were at like a month or two prior to the market peak? Right? Usually it's a slow grind upwards over years and years and years and years and years. And then there's a pullback that takes back years of growth. And we've seen it happen. But all Microsoft is doing right now is that they're barely back to just last year. Last year, October, we were trading at 280 on Microsoft. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P down one point right now, 4,098. NASDAQ 100, negative by 33 points, 12,517. This has been one of the discussions that people have been talking about, right? We get a cut from Microsoft for their guidance. We jump over to Microsoft shares down 3% to 264. The whole conversation was how multiples have been pulled back to a more reasonable level, right? Earnings multiples being pulled back to a more reasonable level. But what happens when we start cutting earnings estimates and then those multiples basically go up? Right? You're going to make less money on earnings 
then you're dealing with multiples that are way above the level that we are now deeming more reasonable. And we wake up this morning and you got Microsoft trading down almost 4% to 260, 291. NASDAQ 100 negative by 68 points. We jump over to Google shares. They're basically flat right now. We jump over to Apple down about eight tenths percent right now. Salesforce down half a percent. They were a big winner yesterday after their earnings. And we jump around to some of the companies that had numbers. GameStop, always interesting, man. It might be the play to trade this thing uh, selling volatility premium around earnings because, man, this thing can rock and roll. They come into earnings always with a huge number. Not sure what the expected move was for earnings last night, but I'm sure it was a big one. 10, 15, 20 percent at least priced in in a move in either direction. And what do you get? You get a move about 4 percent down to the downside right now. At GameStop trading at 116. We jump over to Chewy. They give back some of the gains. They're up 11.49%. They made money instead of losing money. Let's jump over and find some of these stocks that are moving. Uh, and we'll start it off with, is Chewy at the top? Where are we? There it is. So they made four cents a share compared with a consensus forecast of a 14 cents per share loss. They also reported better than expected revenue and stood by their prior outlook. So they're up about 12%. They were up about 19.6%. I mentioned GameStop as well. Hewlett Packard Enterprise fell a penny shy of estimates. Adjustedly quoted the earnings 44 cents a share. Stock was negative in the pre market. HPE is Hewlett Packard Enterprises. Ooh, down 7.5%, probably not getting helped out with the likes of Microsoft, uh, putting this market in negative territory as well. And I think I just want to get to, yeah, so Land's End, they were negative, talking about retailer. Apparel retailer's shares were negative by double digits in the pre-market. A loss of $0.07 cents a share, $0.03 cents smaller than anticipated, but revenue fell short of forecast. Full-year earnings forecast, $0.60 cents to 88 The market was looking for basically 88 So they give themselves a lot more downside uh, on that earnings forecast. Not what you want to see. Because that's what's going to send this market, folks. If everybody starts guiding down on the earnings, that increases the P.E. multiples back up to levels the comfortable company, the market might not be comfortable with. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. Hormel was a little bit positive in the pre-market. They beat the top and bottom line. They make Spam, Dinty Moore, and Jenny O Food Brands. Uh, have not had Spam in a while. Jenny O had some good stuff out there. Have not had that in a while as well. Some healthy stuff. Uh so they backed its earlier full-year sales guidance, said moves to mitigate inflation and supply chain issues were proving effective. Well, that's a little bit encouraging for the market. Hormel, not so much, down 2.4%. We get the market a little bit negative right now, but they're selling off. Conference call just beginning at 9 o'clock, so not sure what's going on there for Hormel. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. Let's jump over to Facebook. They are losing their COO. I believe that was the drop-off, right? Was it late? Did it happen late? I think it did, um, that that news came out. There's the volume that plows in. You go from trading about 600,000 shares, 500,000 shares every 15 minutes, and you trade 7.7 .7 million shares in a 15-minute basis at 3.30, and 3.7 million, so you trade about 11 million shares in the final half hour of the trading day for Facebook. This morning, you're clawing back some of those gains to 189.22. It will be interesting to see what this has... Um, in store for Facebook, leaving Facebook at a perilous moment. That's the opinion piece over at Bloomberg. Uh, that's the headline. And yeah, I would say so, man. Facebook, you talk about earnings. They've gotten back to some decent earnings multiples. But this stock, you put it on a weekly, just chopping around at these lower levels, man. Well below where we were pre-pandemic. You were at 220, right? You're down 15% below price levels that you were at pre-pandemic for Facebook shares at 189. Zuckerberg's talked about next three to five years, they are gonna be spending a lot of money, losing a lot of money on the metaverse. And yeah, that's where things get complicated, man. You, you know, who knows where they're gonna be in three to five years. You cannot guarantee a place in future technology just by spending money, right? Yeah, Zuckerberg, he is a genius. I'm sure he has a path figured out in his head that can get them there. But that's a completely different business model. Uh, somewhat similar to what Netflix is doing, right? Not even close to the same thing, but Netflix turning to advertising as a business model completely changes things in terms of how that may play into future earnings, future multiples that the market values it at. Uh, but yeah, Sheryl Sandberg stepping down after 14 years. She came there in 2008. I think when she showed up, but that makes sense. 14 years ago, Zuckerberg was like 23. Is he 37? It's possible. Um, 
remarkable that he would be that young. But yeah, she's stepping away. I mean, the most instrumental person at Facebook besides Zuckerberg, she was the face of that company for a long time before Zuckerberg really became the face of it. And uh, 97% of Facebook's $117 billion in 2021 revenue came from selling ads. It wasn't that long ago that they didn't sell ads. Do you remember that? Do you remember when they were turning that machine on? Do you remember when they were turning the machine on on mobile ads and people weren't sure if they were going to be able to do that? No small feat, man. And she did it at Google, too. You think about her impact. I was listening to some um, great interviews, just analysis on Bloomberg late last night. And boy, you think about building the two giant engines of the Internet advertising platform of Google and Facebook, doing the both hundred billion dollars, 117 in one single year of revenue basically all of it coming from advertising, and she built that out, man, um, under Zuckerberg's guidance. But yeah, quite a feat, to say the least. All right, we'll see how this plays out. OPEC, let's jump to oil right now. So we have crude, a little bit higher, 42 cents. That's a weekly. We were as high as almost 120 on Tuesday. There's a pop for you, man, from 112 to 115.7. That starts at about 8 o'clock. OPEC oil prices bounce from lows ahead of key OPEC output decision. So OPEC and its oil producing allies, including Russia, met today to discuss production policy for July and whether to increase output more than expected given tight energy markets. We'll see how news comes out of that. Um, Yeah, earlier in the session, oil prices fell after the Financial Times reported Saudi Arabia is prepared to raise crude production if Russia's output significantly falls following European sanctions. I imagine there's more news coming out of there as well. But nonetheless, oil persisting to be volatile. You're up by about $4 from those lows that we were trading at just an hour and a half ago. Man, watch out for that crude market. Yeah, I filled up my – I have a small – BMW coupe and it was the most ever I I put 93 in there and I was almost running on fumes uh, $88 to fill up the gas tank so yeah it's a tough one sitting everybody man um, to say the least S&P's this morning we're trading down about 13 bucks I mean all things considered we're gonna pull back in Microsoft but the market could be down dramatically more you have a Nasdaq 100 down about just half a percent and you have Microsoft right now down 3% guiding down. And you got to imagine that no matter what the reason is for their guiding down, that that could be indicative of things to come. But the market taking it somewhat in stride right now. We jump to the 10-year, see how notes and bonds are trading. Just chopping around, you get the 10-year higher by about 8 ticks at 118.29. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We'll take a look at some of the companies with earnings tonight. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by 13 right now. You have Tesla basically trading flat right now. Another interesting story out here, and this is why, folks, uh, people may follow Elon. Uh, Tesla makes the pitch to turn Texas homes into virtual power plants. The pilot project had 64 homes with rooftop solar and power wall batteries. And basically what happens is uh, the home batteries can be quickly tapped to reduce stress on the state grid. They have to go to, what is the name of it? The Texas, where we are, is in here. Um, if the Electric Reliability Council of Texas approves it, uh, a residential program. We'll see how that plays out in oil-rich Texas. Uh, but yeah, it it's pretty interesting to see what the future could be. There's no reason why. Living in Florida, folks, it's like sunny every single day. Uh, houses around my neighborhood, solar panels, we're in an ideal situation, and it would seem to make sense that you could just be powering your home, have the backups tied to the grid, um, and get in there. So we'll see how that plays out, but that's the type of stuff that attracts human capital to follow Elon, I'm sure. All right, you want to talk about a loss in capital. Tiger Global, 52% is what they're down. 14.2% last month, but they are down 52% this year. When you ask yourself how these companies make big returns, folks. Uh, they've been in a bull market for 14 years, especially in technology, and you're seeing how that can go bad real quick when things start to turn south. And they have a lot of private companies they were talking about in here. So what do they say here? Um, m substantial markdowns in private assets. And they even got to the point, as the value of the public holdings plummeted, Tiger's exposure to illiquid venture capital bets compromised too much of its portfolio, leading the firm to tell investors in its hedge and long-only funds that if they wish to redeem, their private investments will be placed in a separate account that will be cashed out at a later date. So they're reducing fees across the board, um, but a lot of companies in trouble, not able to make money in this, in this market right now after things turn so quickly. All right, let's jump around, as I mentioned, to some of the companies with earnings tonight. We have three good ones. We have CrowdStrike coming out with their numbers. CrowdStrike catching a bid ahead of their numbers, up 3% right now. We take a look at the weekly. This thing bounces right at the 618. You're up to 298 for a high. You trade all the way back down remarkably to a low of 130. Since then, we're up 36 bucks. Uh, I was talking about this earlier, right? It's nice to see the 618. You're kind of back to that area of consolidation that we had in late 2020. But the one thing that's rough going into earnings is that you are up. Let me back this up a little bit further. Yeah. I mean, you're up, folks. $30 from where this equity was trading. How many trading days is that? Five or six trading days ago? Boy, that's a tough one. When you're looking for upside or downside, they're going to have some volatility priced in. There you go. $20 priced in for the move this week. Uh, basically, 
through tomorrow, $20. Let's see, when you talk about the weekly, yeah, $20.79 is the implied volatility through expiration tomorrow for CrowdStrike. They'll be out with their numbers. And as I said, way off of the highs, but we're up about $30, $37 just recently off of their lows. Okay, what else do we get? We got Lululemon out with their numbers. That's always a fan favorite. Lulu, about a 10% move priced into their earnings. You're trading at 290. You have about a $31 move priced into the options that expire tomorrow after the close. I mean, Lulu, we just traded up $40 from where this thing was trading at a week ago. Let's put this thing on a three-year weekly for some context here. Now, the one nice thing about here is the 618 also lines up with the pre-COVID high, which is kind of cool. Right, so you bounce off that level of 250. We're trading at 290 right now. You're up by one tenth percent for Lulu, and as I mentioned, about a 30 or 31 dollar move priced into their earnings after the bell tonight. And the other rounding out the top three, you could say, and we have more than that, but the top three, uh, Restoration Hardware makes it well below the 618. This thing did come right back down to pre-COVID levels, though. You came into COVID at a price point with a high of 256. We actually traded up to a high of 243 in 2019, you make it down to a low of 236 just last week. And since, uh, is that 236? Yes, it is, 236. You're up 50 bucks since then. Look at that thing, remarkable, some of the moves we've had. Yeah, so there it is. You're up $50, you're up over 20% on this equity on that bounce. Now the market bounced tremendously too. We had quite a run coming into Memorial Day weekend. Uh, $50 on a $236 equity, and to jump over to their move, $30 move as well. Restoration Hardware, looking for their numbers. So you got Lulu, I mean, interesting, right? Look at these. They're almost trading at the exact same price with the exact same move. Lulu and Restoration Hardware are both trading around $290. Restoration Hardware is at $287, and both of them have about a 10% move priced in the earnings. And as I mentioned, CrowdStrike, trading at $166, you're looking at about 12 to 13% move implied for their earnings after the bell tonight. We also get Asana and a couple other companies as well. Uh, what do we get? Yeah, ClearSign, Samsara, but none too notable as CrowdStrike, Lululemon, Restoration Hardware. Here's the kicker about playing an earnings event tonight. What's pretty cool is that if you're selling volatility and you are trading options for a company with their earnings event tonight, you're also paying for the volatility premium in that equity for the non-farm payroll number tomorrow. So if you're trading a company like CrowdStrike, they're gonna be a growth company, right? If you're trading a company, um, any of these companies could be hit in terms of if we could get a surprise one way or, or the other on the jobs number. Somehow, that sometimes that can go against you, right? Maybe you go bullish the stock overnight for their earnings, you are accurate, the stock trades higher, and then the market sells off tomorrow because you gotta make it through the non-farm payroll number that, and you know what's so crazy about this is, is that I was gonna say disappoints, right? But maybe if it disappoints, the market's gonna like that because that means the Fed's gonna like that because the Fed's slowing down the economy so they won't have to hike as much. Whatever the point, there's volatility to come on an earnings event, there's volatility to come on a non-farm payroll number tomorrow at 8.30. Options do not trade overnight, so if you're in any of these equities with earnings tonight, if you're in any options, you can't get out on that news event at 8.30 in the morning tomorrow until options open at 9.30 in the morning. And I imagine that's going to change at some point, right? I mean, that's kind of some of the stuff that's pretty cool about maybe, you know, financial tech, fintech. There's no reason why options can't trade all the time. I know that there's probably fundamental reasons in that market right now in terms of providing liquidity, providing clearing, and the likes. But it's only a matter of time because there is no reason why options cannot be trading all the time. Now, yes, when you're getting huge moves in options, you know, you're getting earnings events moving, maybe that market has to dry up because you're not, market makers aren't quite sure where to put a bid and an offer or how wide that bid offer spread has to be to be able to make a market without putting too much risk in play. But there's no reason why options don't trade overnight. There's no reason why everything doesn't trade 24 seven. That's what crypto trades, and that's probably where everything's going, and that's why some of the applications of even NFTs, if crypto in the financial tech space, could prove promising when you look at the ability to trade some of those 24 seven, just like crypto does. I mean, think about it. It's so rudimentary, right? But an NFT is something that you can non-fungible token. 
Well, maybe TFNN issues 100 NFTs, which all represent 1% ownership in the company. And then what are they doing? Those NFTs are being traded on the blockchain 24 seven. That would be akin to TFNN ownership shares being traded 24-7, 365. And that's somebody who understands nothing to do with crypto, just saying, hmm, I, can, I see how that might be able to play out. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got Microsoft's clawing back some of those losses. We're only down $5 right now. We're down 1.8%. Microsoft was below 262. They had a 261 handle. Just like that, you pop $6 on the price of Microsoft shares. NASDAQ 100, actually positive right now by about five points as we chop around 12,551. You're talking about yields right now, 2.94%, 2.935 to be exact, as we inch towards 3% yet again. Seems like that's a number. Um, nice round number, right? Maybe the market, that's where it's comfortable chopping around for a bit. As we get a Fed meeting coming up, I believe, yeah, Jan June 14th and 15th. So we get non-farm payrolls this week. And just like that, we come back next week and you're going to be talking about waiting for the Fed June 14th and 15th coming out with probably a hike. And we'll see what they have to say. They're going to give things a few months at this pace, and then we'll see where they go from there, depending on this economy. Some of that may have to do with what happens tomorrow. Where's wage data? 
And where's the jobs after a little bit of a miss on the ADP? But as I mentioned prior, it's interesting that sometimes you you don't even know what the market's going to do with what type of number, as in it used to be that if the economy is growing and we have robust jobs, that the market likes that. But in this environment where so much is up in the air with the Fed's course of rate hikes, that if the market is still running too hot and inflation, I should say, then that's going to be a problem. And so the market almost is going to like to see moderated deceleration, just not too much. It's a very, very sweet spot that they have to find without too much wiggle room in terms of don't grow too much, but grow, but don't grow too much so that wages can come down, right? And inflation can come down and growth can come down from where it was, but don't come down too much. We'll see. We'll find out tomorrow. And we'll finish it up real quick. Home prices. U.S. for sale homes rise for first time since 2019. Real.com says be interesting to see how this one plays out, folks. Uh, I imagine there is a pullback coming in this market. Tampa up something like 35% year over year. So you're buying a $300,000 house last year at 3.2%. This year you're buying a $400,000 house at 5.3%. That's a tough one. Thanks for starting your day, folks. Market back to negative action. Basil's up next. Live programming all day. Have a great Thursday, everybody. Building